So pool balls, pool balls. Pool balls. Are we going to do a collision? Anyway. So I want to have a ball A. And ball A is going to hit another ball, B. And then ball A is going to careen off in another direction like this. Okay, So I'm going to label these guys up so you can see which ball is which. So we've got ball A. I will make it spots and stripes. Ball A. Oh, solid. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's call it Boston and split the difference, okay? Boston ball. Huh? You also don't play with a red ball with an A on it, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We're suspending our disbelief to a certain extent. That's okay. All right, so we've got ball A hitting ball B. Red ball hitting the blue ball. And we've got to throw in some extra measurements for this scenario as well. What I want to say is that ball A screens off at 40 degrees. So I'm going to call that theta A. I really could call it theta A prime, but I'm just going to call it theta A because ball A initially is coming in horizontally, or not horizontally, directly west. Theta A is equal to 40 degrees. And let's let theta B be 31 Point one degrees. Okay, very accurate pool table. What's theta A? Eight, eight, theta A is the angle relative no, to the what? oh forty degrees, forty degrees. Okay, and we'll we'll give ourselves a reference frame: north, south, east, and west. What's positive? Uh, I think I want to make south positive this time. I think I'd like to make uh, west positive as well, just because we can. Okay. And I'd like to say that ball A, it's pretty clear here, but I'd like to say that ball A is traveling directly west to start with, just so we don't have to deal with any initial angles. All right, so previously we've said things like Px is equal to Px prime. So let's start there. What's contributing all the Px momentum here? A. Yeah, A initially. So I've got Ma... V A X. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stop talking through this math because I find it annoying, and I'm just going to write it for a little bit. Okay? We don't have math yet. No, we don't. Well, we haven't defined the problem yet. I'm just making some statements, laying down some knowledge. And let's say that we have some masses for these, these pool balls. Let's make them, uh, now I'm not going to go overly realistic here. Let's give them masses of uh, 1.55 kilograms, OK? Each? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, they're, they're hefty balls. I know. It's OK. 1.55 kilograms. <clears throat> Novelty pool balls with A's and B's written on them. Yeah, super pool. On my super pool table. Three and a half pound pool balls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, I, play with, I play with these, these big ones so I can be ready for the little tables. <coughs> Smash them. All right. So that's one thing that I could state. I want to make another statement. I'm going to leave myself about half a page of space here. I want to make another statement. My other statement is going to be about the y component. Py is equal to Py primed. Now, is there any momentum in the y direction to start with? No. So that's actually kind of a sweet thing to notice. I could say that Py is 0. So what's Py primed going to be in the end? It'll be zero, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't 
write out the expression for it because it won't have all zero values or anything like that. They're careening off in different directions. So I'm going to say that zero is equal to the primed momentum in the y direction. <coughs> Alright, let's start uh, plugging in some values, I guess, here we could say. Looking at, uh, at this equation up here, which values are going to zero out? Yeah? Yeah, that's a good one to know. So that guy's going to zero out. That's going to make our world just a little bit simpler. It's good to simplify things before we start, just like we did down here. I think so. I think that's it. And we happen to know, do we happen to know the VAX? We don't have any initial loss. Oh, I didn't give my VAX. Um, VAX initial is 2.35 meters per second. Sorry, I should give that value. All right, so now we have our VAX, we have our MA. We know MA, we know MB. We don't know VAX prime or VBX prime. Fair enough? Now I want to I want to start framing the question. Here's the, the, the question we're working towards. Find the final velocities of the two pool balls. And I can see that they're embedded in those equations, but we've got to dig them out somehow. Yeah? Also for uh, PS prime kit, MA, and two of Oh, yeah, you know what? I want to leave it in a general form for now, just in case you ever come across two objects that aren't the same mass. I don't want to go too crazy with the oversimplification, because in general, things aren't, the, aren't identical. Yeah? Um, when you're using uh, like the PX equals PX prime, Say you find Px and it's equal to like, okay, I did, it's equal to 3.6435 joules. Yeah. Um, since the masses are the same, can you factor them both out on the... Yeah, that's what Tyler's asking, asking if we can get rid of the M, Ms and just sort of blow them away from both sides. Uh, you could in a special case where these Ms are equal. I want to keep them not, I want to not do that for as long as possible though. Just, just because I'd like to be as general as possible to approach it as, you know, mm -hmm. as you might find it more generally in, in uh, the world. All right. Now, I usually like to isolate for a variable, but in this case, there's two variables that I don't know. So I'm going to do the unusual thing of plugging in values. Okay, I, I don't like doing that, but here we are. Let's do it, okay? It's a little unusual. So wh what did you find MA times VA to be? Uh, 3.6425 joules. 3.24? 3.64? 3.64? Yeah, 3.64 joules. Joules? It's momentum. Right. So, okay, so what was it, 3.64? Yep. Anybody want to second that motion? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Kilogram meters per second is equal to, and I'm going to plug in my values, 1.55. You know what? I'm going to run into space if I don't do this, so I'm going to do another naughty thing. I'm going to drop the units, okay? Just my marker's too fat and my page is too small. 1.55 times VAX primed. Now, I could say VAX primed, but you know, embedded within VAX primed is another expression. VAX primed is really VA primed times what? Cos yeah, cos theta. Is it cos or is it It's cos. Yeah. Cos theta A. So I'm going to do that little embedding right now. I'm going to say VA primed times, now what was theta A equal to? 40 degrees? Yeah. So cos of 40 plus 1.55, and I know it's kilograms, I'm just going to run out of space, times, oh look, instead of saying VBX primed, couldn't I say something else? Looks like I could say VB primed cos 31.1, yeah? Mm -hmm. So VB primed cos 31.1, I could throw that in there. Oh, 31.1 off my page. Now, 
If I wanted to make this simpler, if I just wanted to have a couple of coefficients in front of VA primed and VB primed, let's do that, okay? I could do 3.64, and again, I'm going to drop the units at this point. 3.64, how could I make it just be one coefficient in front of a VA primed? What would I have to do? Multiply 1.55 times cos 40, yeah? Okay, so somebody help me out. What's 1.55 times cosine of 40? One point one eight seven. Okay, that would be V A primed. And then what's the coefficient that should go in front of V B prime? One point five five times cos thirty one point one. Sorry? One point three two seven. Now I want to come back to this idea of reference frames because it's always important in a two-dimensional situation to recognize that some of these vectors may be positives while some of them may be negatives. And if we're dealing in the x directions, what can you tell me about the x component of vector a afterwards? Is it to the positive direction? Yes. What about in the x direction for vector b? Also in the positive direction? Yes. Okay, good. We haven't stepped on any toes yet. But it, it's good that we got to keep that in mind for when we go and do the y components, okay? So I just want to frame the idea that when we get to the y components. So when we get to these y components, I want to leave this for a little bit. And I think at this time I'd like to just uh, maybe call that equation 1 for no particular reason. Well, for a particular reason. Some of you probably see why. Yeah, substitution. Gauge all math. All right. I'm going to start subbing in my values again. 1.55, and again, I'm going to drop the units, otherwise I'm going to run out of space. So 1.55 kilograms times V A Y primed plus 1.55 times V B Y primed. Uh, is there something fishy here? Thinking about the signs. What should I do here as a logical step? Daniel? Yeah, may maybe oh, wait, make. Wait. Well, it's it's pretty obvious that because it's zero, that one is going to basically negative the other, so the velocities are going to be equal in an opposite direction. Yeah. So here I'm going to choose the the a object to be negative. Does that fit with my reference frame from earlier? Yes. Yeah, we, we called north negative. Oh. So you have to be intentional about which one you choose to be negative based on what you've defined as your directional reference frame. So you got to keep your head about you there. All right. Now again, instead of saying VAY primed, we could also say VAY primed is equal to VA primed times what? What trig ratio? Yeah, sine of theta A. And likewise for VBY primed, we could say it's VB primed times sine theta B. And I'm going to plug those guys into this line of my math. I'm going to do some, some uh, substitution there. So 0 equals negative 1.55. Instead of VAY primed now, we're going to say VA primed. And instead of saying sine theta A, I'm actually going to plug in the value for theta A, so sine of 40 plus 1.55 VB primed times sine of 31.1 degrees. And again, we're going to do the same thing with our coefficients. I've got 1.55 and I've got a sine of 40, so I'd like to multiply them together to make a nice numerical co coefficient. And 1.55 times sine 31.1 to make a nice numerical coefficient. Okay? So I do need a little bit of help with that. 0 0.8006. 0 0 Oopsie. Okay. The first one is negative. Zero negative, yeah. Negative what? 0 0.996. 996? 0 0.996. And the other one is 0 0.800. Or 801. Yeah, yeah, 801. 801, okay. VA primed plus 0 0.801 VB primed. Okay. So now we've got ourselves a second equation. How would you like to proceed from here? Let's isolate A so that it becomes positive. Which one do you want to isolate? A. 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 Oh, in which equation? One or two? Oh, in two. Oh, yeah, I think two will be easier, right? Because it's got a zero on the left-hand side. Yeah. 
Oh, I was just going to say, oh, I can't. Okay.